the flight reading for the uh, the flight. So we got to NRC yesterday, spent a large portion of the day uh, getting attachments and some other stuff for some of our other trucks, and uh, we made it back as far as Potsdam, New York. But uh, we're just headed out to the truck now to continue about the nine, around nine hours yet to go. So give you guys a look here. So. As you guys can see, it's definitely a uh, very large truck, uh, but overall handles pretty good, and uh, we're definitely pleased with the way it came out. So um, we're gonna do a walk around here, make sure everything looks looks good, do our pre-trip, so to speak, and uh, we're gonna get on the road and get the rest of the way back to Ohio. So uh, once we get back there, we'll do a further um, in-depth video but uh yeah stay tuned Okay, so as you guys just watched, we did make it back from NRC with the new 65 ton rotator, which is now in the shop here sitting behind me. And as you can tell, it certainly fills up the shop bay pretty well. Um, we made it back, uh, I want to say maybe right around 5 30, 6 o'clock. It was raining, um, so uh, we spent the night in a hotel. Went the remaining way. Went the remaining way, um, and I would say overall drive time was maybe around 12 hours. But uh, yeah, really satisfied with the way the truck performed, just driving at home. And uh, once we got back there, it was raining, but we did take it out in the parking lot and kind of test it out or play with it per se. But uh, yeah. We've had it now for, I don't know, a little over a month, and we've been busy. As you can kind of see here, there's just a whole conglomeration of tools and stuff, rigging, all kinds of stuff that uh, we've been working on putting in the box and getting everything organized. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of everything, and as you can tell, the the 27 ton project has kind of taken a, a back seat until we get all of the, all of the everyday stuff uh, done with this. 
But uh, yeah, for those of you that haven't hadn't watched the video of the chassis, um, the truck is a 2023 W900. It has the 605 horse X15 Cummins in it and uh, 2050 torque. I think it's got 411, I think 411 rears in it. Um, we bought the chassis. Uh, originally this truck was set to be complete last July, uh, but because of setbacks, it just kept getting shoved back. But uh, from there, it went to Samard suspension, got the second steer axle configured, and um, yeah. So overall process was about two years and two months from the time we ordered it initially till now. Um, but yeah, we wanted to give you guys uh, kind of a little walk around. We've been working on getting some customization done inside the boxes, but uh, we'll kind of, I guess we might as well start up here. Actually, we'll go back here, power it up. Um, that way the box lights are on, gives a little bit better view. Um, the first thing you will notice this compared to the 50 ton, the boxes do sit taller and uh, the side boxes are completely composite. Uh, and what looks to be a door handle, there's actually an electronic button that uh, you push the button and it electronically triggers the latch. Um, part of the reasoning for that is so that you can lock all of the toolbox doors with the remote on the entire truck versus the 50 ton that each individual toolbox door has a, uh, a manual lock that would need to be locked. So um, we we'll can, can, as an override here, we'll flip that on, which powers up uh, the bed essentially. We'll start here, kind of give a little synopsis. So in here we've been working, uh, yesterday we were working on kind of reconfiguring the DEF tank a little bit. Uh, since we did opt to go with the full height tunnel box, the only place left for the DEF tank was in here. Uh, and when we got it, uh, we just got the Unistrut there kind of supporting it, the DEF lines, uh, fluid lines go down through the box. But uh, just to gain a little bit more room, we adjusted the Unistrut so that it shifted the entire tank. We shifted it back about four inches, shifted it to the left about four inches, and then was able to get it raised up off of the floor of the box here, maybe another six to eight inches. So. Uh, we still have to go to the, the fuel stop and see, hopefully, that uh, we can make that angle work with the nozzle to be able to fill it. But it lets us uh, gain a little bit more storage area under here and to the side of it that would have um, been dead space otherwise. Going up there, you'll see the uh, control for the Wilbert light tower that... Uh, is mounted up on top there. So the Wilbert light tower is essentially a scene light uh, similar to that of what you would see on a fire truck. That'll telescope up uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 feet, rotate 360. Each one of the light banks on each side you can swivel them and kind of just provides a, an overall um, overall scene lighting for, you know, for rollovers. That'll be, be pretty nice for that. So this is the first truck we've ever had with one. It is a pricey option, but I think in the long run it will pay off. I'm going back to the next tunnel box. Um, as you guys can tell, uh, we've already got some stuff in it, been busy, uh, we, we went and had these shelves, um, the intermediate shelves, made uh, because of the slide cylinder. The tunnel box is 
kind of notched up there, so um, it makes it a little bit harder for stuff compared to the 50 ton that goes the whole way across. But uh, yeah, I went to the, one of the local fab shops, had them fab up the shelf. Uh, we got the brackets through NRC, uh, drilled, put rivet nuts in there. Um, and we've been, even with the 50 ton, we've been ordering these milk crates. You can order them any color, and it kind of helps us keep track of the rigging a little bit easier. Uh, I think we're going to go to our decal maker, have them make us some decals that will label uh, each one of these and just stating what length they are and uh, the size of the rigging, maybe some working load limits on it just to make things a little easier. Also, the um, snatch block holders there, as you can see, snatch blocks are laying here on the floor. Um, I haven't quite decided yet. The blue ones can only be used on the auxiliaries. The orange ones are 12 ton snatch blocks and the skookums, uh, the 15 ton, or the silver looking ones there. Uh, we may end up just getting four of the skookums and do something with, with the orange evolution blocks, um, just to make things a little bit easier. So we wanted to make that decision before we decide how we're going to put them in here and kind of uh, the little bottom holders to hold them so they don't kind of scoot around inside of there. But uh, yeah, and a lot of this stuff, uh, because we thought we were getting the truck last year, probably 90% of the rigging here we have purchased back in November of 2022. So it's been all sitting on a shelf. Um, but yeah, this box uh, compared to the old 50 ton, I should say compared to the 50 ton, uh, it would normally open up and then your outriggers would be stored underneath. This one has a separate latch. We're still working on that one. Um, I think we're gonna put our chain binders and, and uh, some other stuff in here since this is a shallower box because the hydraulic tank sits on the back side of here. Um, the outriggers have a little access handle here. You flip it, it has a door that flips down and then that way if you didn't want to have both doors open uh, kind of quicker access to get into the outrigger doors. So it's that way on both sides. And one other thing, I don't know, it's hard to notice because the lights are on as soon as the toolbox opens, but the because the door operations are electronic push button, as soon as the door opens, it automatically turns on the toolbox light. This box is another one, uh, kind of just some, some tools. We got some easy outs there, a small ratchet set, hole saws. Uh, there's some of the Baileys, uh, the soft shackles, um, jacks, some other stuff. This one we haven't really got to organize in this box yet. I think we're going to have our tow light bar mounted up in here. Uh, we'll go ahead and close that one. Going to the next box, this is um, pretty much all the hand tools that we would need to uh, remote control hand tools, our impact sockets, uh, there's a U-joint puller, and the um, there's the pin for the boom, uh, or the under each to unhook from the, unhook the boom from the under each. But uh, one thing that I'll point out that NRC has been doing this for, I want to say about 10 years now. Uh, they put these aluminum, extruded aluminum panels in and they have a little specialty, like a, a clip nut that goes inside of the track. So it kind of makes it to where you can 
kind of a blank slate to set this up, set each box up, uh, almost whatever way you want. So what we've found extremely helpful is it's just a 5 16 I believe, 5 16 18 thread. And uh, we've been buying longer um, stainless steel bolts in the four and six inch configuration. And we'll just set the tool in, uh, kind of mark it, bend the, the piece how we need, then put a lock nut, kind of hard to see, put a lock nut or a lock washer uh, with a nut that we can kind of tighten it down. Um, so it kind of makes our own custom tool holders per se. Uh, we've done that with the 40 ton, we've done that with the 50 ton, but uh, it's exceptionally helpful here with these taller boxes as you kind of gain that extra, extra space. So then back here, what they've done with this body style is there's a small toolbox here for some more forks and accessories. Um, we may get a little shelf made for some small ratchet straps or axle straps to put in there. Um, there's not a whole lot of space in this box, but it is kind of utilizing every little bit of space possible. So that side has forks. This side here has a couple, couple forks. Uh, this side pretty much mirrors um, the driver's side. So compared to our 50 ton, the 50 ton has all the manual direct controls to the hydraulic valve body, where this you can control everything on the entire truck from both sides. Um, yeah, so you can control everything from both sides. Uh, this you'll see it's set up with a, like a warning on the screen. You'd simply click the button and that would switch the controls to this side. There is manual override uh, in case of an emergency, they are in essentially this box, but on the other side, there's a little access panel you can pull off and there's just little knobs, push pull knobs, um, everything for the boom. So the winches, four winches and your boom up and down in and out functions are up inside. You have to pull a stainless panel off uh, and then you can gain access to those. But, uh, yeah. Every kind of nice being able to control uh, the 50 ton. You could uh, most of your light controls, uh, your winch free spools, all of that were only on the driver's side. Uh, the biggest difference with this one is everything's controlled through a screen now instead of a switch rack. So uh, more of it's computerized, I guess you would call it. But uh, yeah, go to the next box. This one we've gotten organized uh, is pretty much kind of a rigging box. All of our clevises, we have some master links. Uh, we have a couple uh, of these in the other truck. They're a, a hook that would kind of have a, a chain clutch. So you can kind of hook that on in the middle of the chain and just gives you a little bit more versatility. Uh, the catcher hook assembly, which goes in the end of the boom uh, to add, uh, add some more rigging points. But uh, yeah, somebody keeps texting me here. Mm. But um, yeah, that's an NRC uh, shackle holder. All of these we custom made ourselves. That's an NRC holder uh, that we kind of modified a little bit to fit the, uh, so it would fit in here. But uh, we'll go to the next box. The next box is going to be all of our toe pins. As you can see there, uh, we set them all up, have them labeled, and um, yeah, kind of tucks them up out of the way. We've got some strap protectors there. Uh, we recently bought one of the Baileys, uh, the urethane sleeves. Uh, we've tried these out a little bit and uh, they're 
really, uh, really a robust strap protector. Um, you can kind of put it around the guard. This was one whole three foot length. We cut it down, sliced it in half. So this one can still go on um, slings, whatever, um, whatever needs, I guess, protection from being cut on the sharp edge. Uh, we got a basket here, nothing's in there yet. I think this is gonna be kind of our, our two inch ratchet strap. Uh, we'll have a bin there for some of the shorter ones, some of the longer ones. Um, this side, again, you open up. As you can see, this side sits a little bit deeper because it does not have the hydraulic tank sitting directly behind it. Uh, you still have the same T-handle there, which opens up to your outrigger box. That latch there. So this one, we have our fifth wheel uh, attachment piece. The plate for on top. We're going to get a mount made that will hang it on the wall. Uh, there's our double swivel, double swivel, triple swivel adapters, whatever you want to call them. NRC multi position swivel. And there's just the standard ones. We've got our pins and stuff um, up in there. Um, yeah. We've got some lumber. Uh, four by six oak planks that uh, that's what we're trying to get. I'm just might as well skip to this box for now. Trying to get it um, set up somehow where they'll go inside of this box. Uh, we may make a shelf that fits over top of there um, or possibly which would attach in, but we'd have to kind of customize it. This panel here we pulled out yesterday when we were working on the adjusting the DEF tank. I mean, you can see the all of the battery cables and excess cable for the light tower. Battery cables go up in top to access the battery box, um, which is one of the nicer things that we we do like since we have replaced the batteries on the 50 ton. Yes, you do have to lift them up quite high, but uh, it's very easily accessible. So just pull two little bolts off the side there, as you can see, and that whole fiberglass cover lifts right off. Um, last box. We have um, pretty much the same as the other side, but the, you can see there's some heavy aluminum uh, angle, and some round slings, we have some flat straps, uh, there's some of the Baileys, the 5 8 grommet slings, the other side's got the half inch ones since we're using those a lot more. Um, kind of like to keep the stuff that we're using constantly on the driver's side, but um, we're also kind of trying to set this up. Uh, very similar to the way the 50 ton set up. That way it's just uh, standardization, standardization uh, efficiency. Um, but obviously we've had to move a couple things around. Uh, the other side box has the forks on the rotator. Now the forks are going on this one here. Uh, so again, that the NRC aluminum panel able to set up their fork holders. We made the chain rack here out of uh, the vinyl sleeves like would go on a fence post. Bent up the aluminum piece so that kind of holds it nicely. Keeps the chain from you know rattling around. Uh, kind of makes a nice pocket but organizes things really really well. So yeah overall that uh, pretty much the truck, I guess, as we are setting it up, how we're planning on setting it up. Um, we put the visor on it before it ever even went to the factory. Uh, got some of the air cleaner lights. We are going to put a another beacon bar over the roof. Um, 
I want to get one that will match that, the one that's on the mast. Uh, we opted to go that route instead of the pylon like our 50 ton has. So this one will have two beacons and uh, we're going to add some more, some of the Welland strobes on the hood and the grill. Uh, I think we may pop one down here on both sides because we'll have to check, but I think the plugs are there in the wiring for it. Um, but yeah, we'll kind of finish this video up. Uh, we'll go back over here to the driver's side and just kind of show you uh, the operation of the controls. Uh, click that, we'll get it back to the screen. So essentially the controls are very similar to the 50 ton. We just don't have that whole row of switches like the 50 ton has. Um, you've got this dial and each button is a subscreen. So you've got subscreen one, subscreen two, which is your winches, subscreen three which controls your speed, your slide and rotate lock, subscreen four, which will tell you what your boom angle is, how much boom you have out, um, your weight, uh, it'll tell you what the fuel level of the truck is, just a, a whole lot of, a lot of parameters um, that are, are kind of really, really helpful compared to the 50 ton uh, final subscreen that will control all of your lights. You can click that, we'll turn them all on. So forgot to notice or note that this one we opted for lights on the end of the shiv heads. Uh, just add a little bit more uh, lighting to it, but we have the strobes or strobe package, which makes all the marker lights Go back and forth, uh, floodlights there, floodlights under the boom. Um, and then with the addition, like we talked earlier, the, uh, the light tower, it is well lit up. So flip that off. We can adjust the, the brightness of our controls. Um, this is also touch screen here. So everything, same thing with this, you can rotate with the dial, which will rotate through your screen. Click it. Um, you can click back to here, the first subscreen. That's your hydraulic outriggers in and out versus up and down. Um, and if you'll notice here on this one, uh, we'll turn the screen brightness down. Camera picks it up a little bit better. But uh, yeah, we can click that, which will click it to underlift mode, which will then switch these controls from your outriggers to your boom and your underreach. And the biggest thing I think that that is for, if you're trying to operate it from here, the box is so tall that you have a hard time seeing it. So by switching it to here, you can stand at the back corner see what you're doing. So that's kind of a helpful little feature. We'll click no. Uh, we'll go to the winch one. Instead of the series of switches like we have on the 50 ton, you just flip the switch, it would free spool. Now you would click it. It asks if you, are you sure you want to? Yes, no. Um, that would flip our remote control on. Uh, once we sync it up, that will adjust between 50% and 100% for your, your valve body throw. Um, in certain lifts, it would help you be a little bit more uh, kind of fine-tuned or, or uh, I guess just a little bit slower, I guess. Um, that you can switch between fast or slow. Um, and then your scale, obviously. Um, of course, your tool function, your calibration, uh, information. And then you can kind of get a whole list of parameters of, of what uh, 
how the truck functions. That little symbol there is uh, hard to see with the camera. It's essentially a sensor showing that the boom is centered in order to be able to hook back up to the end of each. So once you get it close to there, you would hit your, uh, let's see here. Once you get it close to there, you would hit your lock buttons that would illuminate when it's centered and uh, yeah, helps things. There's just a lot of uh, safety measures, I guess. More safety measures with this system than the, than the old one. But uh, yeah, we have used it now on a few different jobs, which you guys will be seeing uh, here within the upcoming weeks. But uh, I know it's been, if those of you that have been following along on YouTube, uh, and know we've had the truck for about a month, uh, we've just been kind of hard at work here, kind of getting the boxes organized, and uh, that way just give a little bit better of a, I guess a show of depth of how we're setting the truck up and uh, to kind of go along with the intended use of it. So we're going to flip the override switch back to off, close things up here. Um, yeah, close things up here. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, we certainly have enjoyed this moment. Uh, we've been waiting for it for like I said, a little over two years now. Uh, the few jobs that we've used it on, it has definitely exceeded our expectations uh, for the capabilities of the truck. So looking forward to getting some of those videos out here, like I said, in the next couple weeks. Um, yeah, go ahead and drop us a comment. Let us know what you thought of the video. Let us know what you like about the truck or don't like about the truck. Uh, yeah. Like, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.